This video is going to be me showing you all of the settings that I use on the Olympus Pen F for astrophotography. Now, these settings are for if you are stacking your images, taking calibration frames like biases, darks, flats, dark flats, etc., and so forth, and then you know, for stacking them in imaging software for astrophotography. If you are taking just one shot pictures of the sky, that's a totally different animal and requires a totally different type of settings. Now in most instances, you're not going to have a lens like this on the camera, but I've got it on here just because this is the lens we mostly use. First, you're probably gonna wanna be in manual mode. And then in the menu here, we're going to change a lot of settings. So first off, we're gonna start at the top, picture mode. So I like to use muted colors. And the reason why is for post-processing reasons. And here, raw images, of course, is selected. Aspect ratio, we want to use the full sensor usually. Teleconverter, I set to off. Now, this right here, this is the built-in intervalometer. Now, this can be used, but the only limitation to this intervalometer is the fact that you're limited to a 60 second exposure. If you want to take longer exposures than that, then you're going to need to use the bulb timer, in which case the, the built-in intervalometer, of course, is not useful to you. But this guy is very handy. Let's go back and let's go down to camera function two. Now, of course, all these here I keep off. Keystone compensation, make sure you turn this off. And then we get into some of the deeper settings, all right? Autofocus mode isn't really going to matter. You're probably going to be in manual focus anyways. Bulb time focusing. This would be if you were using single exposures and so forth. I'm not really going to address that here. Manual focus assist. So manual focus assist, you can turn on peaking and so forth. This can be handy for taking pictures of the moon and so forth. But when it comes to focusing on actual stars, you would want to keep this off. For focusing on stars, I would recommend that you use a Batonoff mask. Now, autofocus illuminator, of course, we can turn that off. We don't need that turning on because it's just going to be a light that's going to probably blind us. Uh, if you're at a star party, it will make other astrophotographers there rather upset. Face detection, I would actually turn this off just in case for some reason your camera recognizes some face in the stars. <clears throat> The manual focus clutch is, is something that I actually turn off just because it's too easy to turn it on or turn it off or bump it at night and not realize this. Image stabilization is also something that you will want to turn off. I know for Landscape type photography, even if you're taking like eight second exposure, you can leave image stabilization on. Robin Wong did a video and he proved this. For astrophotography though, typically you're tracking the sky and so the camera is in fact moving. So yes, turn off image stabilization. And also, if you're doing planetary type photography with this camera, like taking, which you'll be doing video, you will also want to turn off image stabilization for the video mode as well. All right, so image stabilization off, lens, so image stabilization off, it should be off. A lot of these picture settings don't really matter too much. The live boost mode, now, live view boost. It's merely going to change the brightness of the image to re reflect the actual exposure that you're going to be taking. Now, if you're taking very long exposures, Obviously, live view boost isn't really going to help you. So I do turn it off basically to, to brighten up the image as much as I can, just so I can kind of see what I'm doing. Because we're going to set our images back to a linear state anyways. Now, frame rate. Uh, I set the frame rate to normal. The reason why is we don't need speed in this particular instance. And we don't want the camera working up warming itself up, working harder with its processor and so forth. 
flicker reduction, you can just turn that off because we're not going to be imaging any neon lights or any sodium halogen lights or whatever those things that flicker. Uh, sleep time. Now, you may actually want to turn off sleep time altogether when you're doing astrophotography just because you don't want to have to wake your camera up as you're playing with your scope or your tracker or whatever. Auto power off. You may actually want to turn this off altogether as well, depending on how long you intend to shoot. Now, the battery life in this guy, it's actually amazingly pretty good for considering it's a very small battery. Now, EV steps, I like using one, one click EV steps. It just means that I'm turning the dials less at night. Okay, noise reduction, you definitely want to turn this off. The noise filter, you also definitely want to turn this off. These are one of the three big things you need to change. ISO steps, I like using one EV. Metering can just be normal. Bulb timer, eight minutes. Live time in, in is this setting, see these are for live time type imaging and, and this is a different category altogether. It doesn't really matter for us here. Of course, flash stuff doesn't really matter. Pixel count, obviously you would want to use the entire sensor. Now uh, these are for JPEGs, of course. Shading compensation is definitely something you want to turn off. That is one of the other big things. Our flat calibration frames will of course compensate for any shading or vignetting issues that there are. Keep warm color, I turn that off because we want our raw files to be as absolutely native as possible. And for those of you that are saying, oh, wait a minute, a raw image is going to contain all of that information. Well, here's the thing. Most stacking software turns your images into either a TIFF file or a FIT file. And based on the way the raw file is set, it might lose that information. It depends on what engine you're using just for the sake of safety sake. The color space and warm colors we turn off. Uh, you want to use Adobe RGB, but if you're doing like regular daytime images, of course, obviously you want to be sRGB, right? And then I do actually take RAW plus JPEG uh, a good bit of the time. Now, turning off the JPEG will reduce the amount of processing the camera has to do. So if you're worried about heat, especially on summer nights, it'd be a good thing to just shoot RAW. Now, this is a printing thing. I do set to 300 DPI. Copyright settings, of course, don't really matter. None of the video things really matter. Uh, the EVF style. I like the EVF style that makes it as big as possible. For daytime photography, I don't. But in astrophotography, I want the image in the viewfinder just as big as possible, just to help me focus. Of course, the auto switch will, of course, turn them, turn that on via that little sensor up there. Now, pixel mapping. Pixel mapping is generally something you're going to want to do between every six months to every year. If you do pixel mapping, you're going to really need to do all of your calibration frames. So just bear that in mind. And there we go, we're all done actually. Uh, let's go back to like the main menu here and we'll go to the super control menu here. Obviously, you know, we're, we're in manual focus, of course. All of our R RGB compensations are normal. Gradation is gonna be set to normal. Ooh. Adobe RGB, there we go, face detection is off. The metering, of course, doesn't really matter. We're going to be taking single frames and ISO. I haven't really found the ISO that I like, but typically 1600 is the ISO that I typically use. And then of course, this setting is also to muted. All right, and there you go. Those are all of my settings. As you can see here, we're actually already at 60 seconds. That's, I would be using the built-in intervalometer.